Here are four Logitech keyboards. The new keyboards on the left are the G413s, both with metal plates and Roma G switches. The silver one has white LEDs, the dark one has red. Red is a really common colour for entry level boards, but I think it would have been better with white on both. This review is mostly going to be about the G413s, but I wanted to include the Logitech Pro anyway, and I've already reviewed the G810. Great keyboard, very standard design with Roma G switches, and dedicated media keys. So straight up, that would be my choice because I love dedicated media keys. That's said, if you want a compact version of it and don't mind using a function key instead, then the Logitech Pro keyboard is also good. I'm not going to focus on that in this review, because you could just watch the GA10 review. Other than a detachable cable, it's the same, although typing does sound different on them. There is more bass in the Logitech Pro, so I'd prefer that. Here's a listen now. Even the big keys like shift and enter feel quite stabilised on both, which is really good, and they're even better on the G413s. Here's what they sound like. So while I kind of prefer the build quality of the G413s, the metal plate seems to make the ping sound louder, and typing feels and sounds like it has a bit more rattle than the others. I guess that's a bit of a trade-off, quality against practicality and design. As for the Roma G switch, there's a very slight tactile bump at the top. It's so slight I barely notice it when pressing a single key, but it's just enough to cause the key to feel a bit strange when typing. The more I use these, the less I like them, so I'm less inclined to use them now. They're still good, but I'm used to Cherry MX Reds, so no tactile bump. It's all personal preference though. You have to get what suits you. The keycaps feel about the same, they're decent quality, and the LED is inside the switch. You can't use O-rings on these, but given how quiet they are, they're not really needed. Logitech have also provided some extra keycaps and a keycap puller. I prefer the standard caps though. Testing how many keys I can hold down on the G413s? Plenty, but not all. One extra they do have is a USB 3 port, and it's on the top right of the keyboard. This makes sense for a corner desk, because the top corner is closest to the monitor, meaning you can keep the cable somewhat out of the way, although really, it should be on the left of the cable. This position is not quite as good for directly in front of a monitor. A centered cable is a bit better for that. And speaking of the cable, it's thick, braided, and about 2 meters long. On the base, there's a cable channel for your headset, and it has stands at the back, and rubber feet to prevent it from sliding. The actual keyboard feels quite thin from the open design. I think it feels and looks great. There are only a few options in the Logitech software for the G413, assigning commands to the F keys and minor lighting options. But you can change the brightness with the function key, along with Windows Lock and some media options. The software does support the Pro, which I've shown in the GA10 review, so it has the usual extra commands and lighting. Again, check the link in the description for that. Now here are some highlights while I give my conclusion. I played the entire beta weekend with these keyboards, and they all perform really well, but I always say you can play on pretty much any keyboard. You don't need an expensive one to win or get an advantage, unless you actually need the certain features that only come on gaming keyboards. So if you need macros or something, then yes, definitely get something that's going to support that. So the GA10 and Pro are better keyboards for gaming in that regard, although none of these have extra keys, you need the G910 for that, and that's why I'd use that one instead. Those are the premium boards from Logitech though, and the G413s are entry level, and they're great for what they are. If they sound like they're what you want, then I can recommend them, but they're not for me, as I want everything on a keyboard and Cherry MX switches. So in short, very good boards for what they are, not quite for me, but if they suit you, then of course, you can go check them out and see if you want them. Hope that helps, special thanks to Logitech for sending these out for review, and if you want to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description, and as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.